Hey, I'm Maddie and this is the first time I've had a problem with my van's electrical system that I got installed about a year ago. There are thousands of electricity basics videos on YouTube and I don't think I need to reinvent the wheel here, but I did want to tell you this story so that people who are in a similar situation can maybe see how I um, went through the process of troubleshooting, maybe not feel so alone and lost as I know I did and people that do know electricity pretty well might be able to think of this as a riddle and try to solve the problem before I say what it was. The whole problem actually started when my brakes started making noise one night when I was doing my food delivery job. The next day I searched for mechanics with a lot of good reviews, brought my van in and they said I just needed my brakes replaced, not a problem, but it did take a while so I did have to stay overnight in a hotel and leave my van in the shop. The next day when I got my van back, I noticed my hummus was moldy, my frozen stuff looked like it had been partially melted, and I realized that my van's auxiliary electricity, not the car electricity, but the extra electrical system that we put in had lost power, it looked like. Also, the battery light on my dashboard was on, and so I took it back to that same mechanic. And they didn't really know what the problem was because, of course, they're not used to dealing with extra electrical systems. So we called up the company that installed that electricity about a year ago, and his suggestion was that I needed a new alternator, just based on the fact that my van is kind of old, it's been going a lot of miles, so got a new alternator and that did turn off the battery light. I thought that might be the end of all my troubles until the next week when I got a temporary job and I stopped driving around as much. My van electricity is powered by my solar panels and the energy that's coming off the car's battery. So there was less energy coming to that auxiliary system. I didn't think this would have an effect though because when I did my three week hiking trip, my van was just sitting there the entire time and I was driving it even less. So anyway, a week later, the outlet stopped working. I was just sitting in the back of my van one night and I noticed the LED display telling me how many volts are in my battery went out and then I tried both plugs and they were out too. Luckily, I have a separate connection that goes to my fridge and that was still working. Unluckily, two days later, the fridge went out as well. So I got back in touch with the company that installed my auxiliary electricity and we went back and forth on what was going wrong. On the 21st, I tried using a battery charger to charge up my auxiliary battery all the way full. I left it on over 24 hours, but still the outlets weren't working. Next, I mentioned I was having these problems on a YouTube live and someone that said they were an electricity expert reached out to me and we talked on the phone and he recommended that I try to use an electrical tester. At first, the numbers were going all crazy. We didn't know what was happening. Finally, I just pressed a bunch of buttons. It was measuring volts where I was supposed to be measuring metavolts. And with that tool, we learned that the car battery was fine. The auxiliary battery was fine. All those wires and connections were okay. And we narrowed it down to it must be either a wire or a fuse that's connected to the outlets. Maybe even the outlets themselves could have gone bad. Step one, just connecting the auto battery. I was sure to do the negative side first and then the positive got them covered in plastic. First thing I learned is the nuts that go to these bolts fell somewhere down there. So I'll have to either find them or find some more. Gotta really keep track of those little things. The next part is going to be significantly harder because the negative side of the auxiliary battery I have only a few inches of leverage. This is gonna take forever. There, I moved it a fraction of an inch. Okay, now everything is wrapped 
and it's time to start taking off the panels that make up the walls of my van. This is the part that I was trying to avoid the most. Well, also <laughs> getting shocked, I was trying to avoid that too, but I'm really worried I'm gonna mess up the panels and they won't go back, they won't look good anymore. Uh, so I'm nervous, but I watched a video online and someone did it with tools that looked like this. I have a short-term job right now at a place a place that rents bikes, and these are bike fixing tools that I found. So I'm going to use these, do it slowly, and just hope for the best. going to use this one because it's the thinnest. It's definitely coming up pretty easy, but it's not popping off. Oh gosh, my floor goes all the way up to here. So I bet the pressure of that is going to make it harder to get this off. Oh, did I break it or is that what we want? If you can peer into there, that is the attachment. And I realized I don't have to remove this whole thing. I just have to bend it back this much because it's this panel on the other side that I need to remove. This is how it looks on the other side. Kind of different, kind of weird, but that's okay. I don't need to know everything about why it's like that. Oh, whoa. We have success. It's so cool to see this from the inside. Finally, now that I have access to this, the first thing I'm gonna do is check this fuse. I believe this is the problem. I looked up pictures of what good fuses look like. There's supposed to be a U-shaped thing in the middle. This is a good fuse I got from another part of my system. That's a bad fuse. I called my friend that's helping me with this. He said, yes, that probably is the problem. So now I'm going to buy a fuse, which apparently you can pick up at most gas stations. I could put my car battery back together and drive, but mm, I don't feel like it right now. There's a 7-Eleven within walking distance, so I'm just gonna let this sit for now. Turns out 7-Eleven does not sell fuses, but next door there was a used auto parts store and they gave me a fuse for free. Now I know fuses usually only cost a few dollars, but still that was so nice. Back from getting a new fuse and I just realized as I'm putting stuff back together, I'm gonna have to put it this whole car back together anyway. So walking to save me from assembling it really, it didn't really make a lot of sense, but that's okay. Exercise is good for you. As I'm struggling with getting this bolt back in with everything attached, this light came on. That was the first thing that went away. So I know the electrical system is back up and working. But how about the LED plug? Not the LED plug. The USB plug. Yes, look at those lights. They're on. Plugging my lights into this USB not USB to cigarette lighter converter thing and the lights are on again Woo -woo -woo. <laughs> Now that I have that taken care of, it feels so good. I was really, really nervous because what if I shocked myself? What if I ruined my electrical system entirely? What if I messed up the panels of my van? But now that that first time is out of the way, it feels so much less intimidating. Practice makes perfect and I can only go up from here. I am also so, so appreciative of the fact that I had someone able to talk to me on the phone and I could ask specific questions, um, double check safety measures, get a step-by-step -step process of what to do for my exact situation. And it's not lost on me that I had that help because of my YouTube channel. More people were aware of the problem so I had a more likelihood of finding someone willing to help and it also probably helps that I'm a young woman you know sometimes I think about if I was in a different demographic a person 
would people be as willing to help me as they were. So I do want to acknowledge the fact that this kind of help isn't available to everyone. But how can we change that? There has to be some sort of website out there that connects people that are experts that like talking about these things and giving advice in certain topics to people that are asking for the help. Something not paid for. Is there anything out there already like that? Anyone want to take my idea? Thank you so much for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Bye!